Hey there, and thank you for joining me today. I want to jump into a really hot topic that I have been discussing lately. I don't know how many of you have been on projects lately, and you're trying to figure out, how do I get noticed? A lot of times people rely on being team players. It's one of the main questions that they ask when you're being interviewed for a job, right? Or even if you're looking to enter into a new department, they want to know, are you a team player? Really important to them. But when you become a team player, do you think that it begins to impede your ability to succeed? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. I want to welcome you to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about how less coworker dependency could possibly equal more promotions. So that means that we're going to discuss some things that people think they're great soft skills for you to have, but I'm going to teach you a couple of frameworks that's going to dig really into how you can still get your name noticed, how you can be observed as a lead, whether you're an individual contributor or if you have a higher position. So hey there, I'm Simone with Apelli, and I like to help high-powered business leaders and entrepreneurs navigate leadership transitions and achieve career growth. So today we're going to tackle a really fascinating topic. And so many of us rely on our teams for success. We're taught that that is the number one way to get noticed. We have to make sure that we show employee satisfaction and gratitude and appreciation. But if you're on the other side of things, this could actually mean that you could derail your career if you're not getting noticed and you're not being visible. And that generally is a good thing to have good teamwork, but it's not a good thing when you are reliant and dependent on your team. This often can be a hindrance. If you can relate, put hindrance in the chat, okay? That can be a problem to be a dependent. So this can slow down your career growth. Why? Because you're part of a team, your individual con contributions, they may not shine through and it may make you less likely to be a candidate for promotions. Um, I know that I've seen a lot of folks on teams and they're confused about who is leading, who's handling which task, who actually gets notoriety for specific successes. If you had a project that went really well or something went great, who's responsible for that? Oh, five people work on that team. Five people worked in that team, but each person was responsible for each responsibility. So who's led to success and who perhaps led to failure? These are things that need to be identified and completely separated. So in order to do that, reducing team dependency for career advancement is very critical. So while teamwork is often touted as a must-have skill, excessive reliance on it can actually stifle your individual growth and visibility within the company. So I want you to learn some actionable strategies to go solo, what that actually means, and amplifying your unique contributions and making you a prime candidate for promotions. So let's discover how you can skill up, communicate effectively, manage your time, and harness technology to become more independent and a promotable leader. So when I say going solo, I don't mean Hey, ditch everyone. I'm not going to eat lunch with you anymore. I'm not going to talk to you when we're in meetings. It doesn't mean that you're abandoning your team. I'm talking about taking initiatives and showing your unique skills and values by standing out. You're going to become more visible to management. This is going to increase your chances of getting promoted. If you're the kind of person who thinks that my work will speak for itself, you are hurting your chances of getting promoted. You need to be able to stand out and separate. Yes, my work stands for itself in terms of I put forth quality work, but I also need to lead projects that people are able to see and that makes me more visible. I want you to start thinking that way. So I'm going to give you this blueprint for what going solo is going to mean for you. The first, the first step of going solo is to upskill. You should be self-sufficient in as many areas of your work as possible. So within my 20 years of working in healthcare, I've worked from the front office to the back office, to the provider side, to the health insurance side, from solo, a solo contributor to also an executive leader. That allows for me to get a better understanding on what leadership means. What exactly do they need from me so that I can excel? Which special projects are going to make me 
stand out. This is what I want you to do. I want you to make that observation. I want you to upskill. Do you need certain areas that perhaps you want to improve on? Look to doing that, whether that is taking online courses, if that's certification, um, if that's reading books or just studying in different areas to just kind of make sure that you have a deeper understanding on these different tasks that could come your way and so that you don't have to depend on others to help you out in those areas. This will make you a more complete asset to your company. And then I want you to work on clear and direct communication. Being able to communicate clearly and directly is super essential when you are trying to reduce dependency. How many times have you been in a meeting and you're working on a project or you're trying to get your thought across, someone over talks you or perhaps someone is confused about what you're trying to say. And then instead of you going back and saying, okay, well, this is what I mean, or let me clarify for you, perhaps you let it go. I don't want you to do that. I want you to communicate clearly and directly. And you're going to do that through practicing assertive communication. I want you to make sure that your team knows what you can do and what you're responsible for and setting clear boundaries and expectations. So you know that you are going to work on a specific part of a project or an assignment that you don't need help on. And someone says, hey, I can help you with that. Thank you. I appreciate your assistance, but I can manage this on my own. If I find that something should change, I'll reach out to you. Make that really clear within that project so that there is no confusion. And then I want you to work on mastering time management. Believe it or not, a lot of people fall short on this area. They fail to recognize how much time is going to take to complete specific projects. Therefore, that means they have to ask for more time. It means that it looks like from the outside in, you can't manage your time. You need additional assistance. You need additional resources. So focus on man mastering time management. Poor time management often leads to last minute dependencies. This could result in rushing to complete tasks, increase your stress levels. You don't want to do that. And also the higher likelihood of making mistakes. Making mistakes looks like you're completing sloppy work, poor work. It's not well thought through. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on your time management. And then you want to effectively manage this by allocating sufficient time for each task and prioritize important tasks. And then also reduce um, the risk of encountering last minute dependencies. So you're going to look at your your entire project load, you're going to figure out exactly how much time that you're going to need. If you're still trying to figure that out and play around with it, just kind of map it out about how long is it going to take. Just kind of run through the different areas. And this will not only help you to meet your deadlines more effectively, but it's also going to allow for you to work on better planning and a smoother workflow. So from the outside in, if you have a smoother workflow and you're ahead of schedule, and you're making sure that you're minimizing any last minute issues, that's going to look like you can manage these projects independently. It's going to show what your skill set is, and it's going to help you to lead to better promotion. So the frequent requests for additional help may also raise red flags to management that you consistently need more assistance. If that's not the message that you want to send, you want to take proactive steps to improve your time management skills and lead to increased productivity and again, reduce stress by just an overall better work-life harmony. So let's talk about what this framework solution is going to look like. I want you to use productivity tools like Asana or Trello to track your task and your deadlines. So when I was managing a project, we had to figure out exactly how long does it take to process an application for a um, patient from beginning to end. So if we're taking it through several life cycles multiple software programs, and then we're also looking at quality audits. How long does it take? Does it take two days? Can it happen in a few hours? Those are the kind of things that you want to have answers to. So it may take you running through this process. It may even take you um, talking to a few different people who are more skillful. You can even call up different um, associations and say, hey, well, how is your process with this? And that can help you to further define what that frame like in terms of timelines, deadlines, what does that look like for you? Just to make sure that you're allocating your time effectively for each activity. And then you want to make sure that you actually stick to it. So the next focus is going to be harnessing technology for independence. 
If you can figure out how to automate routine tasks, that is going to save a lot of time. We've talked about this a lot. I've talked about chat GPT. I've talked about some other solutions as well. Um, if you could automate certain things, whether it's shortening the amount of time it takes for you to respond to an email or perhaps is condensing the amount of time it takes for you to figure out a spreadsheet. All of these things are going to help you in the long run because this not only makes you more efficient, but also reduces the need for constant coordination with teammates. Now you don't have to reach out to another teammate or another department to ask for further assistance because you've already got a handle on this, right? So I'm gonna talk about a couple of AI tools that can help you with efficiency and email spreadsheets and performance reviews. So if you're looking at email efficiency, you can use tools like Boomerang, which uses AI to schedule and automate email, sending follow-ups and reminders. That's gonna save you a lot of time ahead of schedule. So if you know you already talked to, you need to talk to Andy who works in another department and you already have the information that you need for Andy, but you don't wanna send it too soon. So let's schedule it for tomorrow morning, first thing, 9 a.m. You don't have to try to remember it. You've already set it to automate. That's going to help you to save a lot of time. And if you want to focus on spreadsheet automation, there are AI-powered spreadsheet tools like Smartsheet, Google Sheets, who can also um, that can help you to automate repetitive tasks. Rather than you calculating the same sheets over and over again, it can do that for you, help you to generate reports, and just save some extra time and improve your accuracy. I also want to take make time that I know that focusing on accuracy and effectiveness and time management also helps to lead you to promotions. The reason being is that you are going to come across as someone who's thinking about all of these different areas and how they function and what it looks like to leadership. So when they're thinking about, should I promote this person? I'm going to look at your body of work. Is it quality work that's really important? Fast work that's inefficient, it's not good work. So you want to make sure that that is also a focus for you. And then if you're looking at performance review assistance, in case you are one that has to work on performance reviews, tools like Reflective or 15.5 leverage AI to help you to streamline the performance review process. Um, I don't know how many people have worked on performance reviews and you find that you are backlogged, you've gotten behind. That also doesn't look well uh, for someone who needs your assistance. They're looking for some support, some feedback from you. So you want to make sure that you can automate part of this process any way that you can. And that will help you in certain features like automated feedback requests, um, performance tracking, data analytics, and also just making performance management more efficient and effective. So these AI tools can significantly enhance efficiency and then also just reduce the need for constant coordination with teams. That is the theme. The theme is to be able to um, ditch the teamwork and use it effectively. It's to lean on people less as appropriate. So if there are certain specific tasks that you can manage independently, that's going to help you stand out in terms of visibility and what you can manage, that's going to make it a lot easier for you. So when you start talking about promotions, it should be a no brainer, right? They can see these things. They can see how you operate. They have been able to observe what you look like outside of a, uh, outside of a team environment. And so just to give you some inspiration, I've seen clients who have adopted these strategies and they're moving from middle management to senior roles and above within less than a year. So their going solo approach showcase their independent skills, making them an ideal candidate for promotions. If you should have any questions about how that works, you can send me some direct questions. You can put it in the comments and I'll be happy to answer those for you. So that's all I have for today. I wanted to make sure that I highlight this, focus on going solo and make sure that you start implementing these steps today and you'll see how less dependency can help lead you to indeed far more promotions. This is going to set you up for success and make you more visible. So thank you again for joining me. And until next time, take care.